Hi, my name is Alyssa, and this is yoga for burnout. Burnout happens when we've been running on fumes for too long, when we are pushing ourselves to endure and not moving from a place of desire, internal motivation, but really a sense of obligation, pushing. So I think of the expression uh, muscling through, when our movements feel heavy and full of effort and we are really just like forcing our bodies to do what we want rather than moving from something more true inside of us. So in the next 30 minutes, what we'll explore is what it might feel like to move not from that place of endurance, but from a rooted sense of vitality, from a desire, from our spirit. We will tend to our inner fire and we'll acquaint ourselves with the allies that can really help us and our bodies um, rediscover the innate power and strength that has been here all along. So we'll begin on our bellies in crocodile pose. So please join me on your belly. Have your hands folded in front of your face and you can gently rest your forehead on your arms. And allow your body to surrender to gravity here. There is nothing being asked of you in this moment besides to tune into your breath. Feeling the support of the ground and the feedback that it provides to you as you notice your belly pushing into the ground as you inhale. Here in this pose, as we breathe, noticing our breath, feeling our breath, we can really start to get to know our first ally in our process of recovering from burnout, which is the earth, the ground. As we feel our pelvis press to the floor, can you notice the earth flooding your pelvic bowl with its vitalizing energy. Can you notice anywhere the earth touching, sending its healing energy through you, into you, giving your muscles an invitation to let go, giving your mind an invitation to let go of control over the muscles in your body and just sink into the floor. Focus on your breathing here, feeling your belly push into the earth. And bring your attention to your hips and the contact they make with the floor, both of your hip points. And can you start gently massaging those hip points into the earth? And you can start to bring a wiggle to your hips as you do so, slow and gentle. And just feeling the gentle massaging sensation here. Noticing how the earth can be a source of revitalizing pleasure and comfort and healing to the body. And let the hips find some spontaneous, very slow movement, maintaining a very grounded connection to the earth. massaging the hip points. And if it feels good, you can speed that up a little bit and add a little bit more wiggle to the hips here. And just let them shake out. Let your body move in a uncontrolled, releasing way. Feeling the hips gently release here. If you feel a sigh, that's a great sign of somatic release of your nervous system switching into a new mode out of fight or flight into a rest and digest mode, which is where we'd like to be here ideally. And go ahead and we'll roll over to our right side. 
reaching our right arm out beyond our head and we'll draw our knees up to our chest. You can place your left hand on the ground to give you some support as you imagine a gentle hand gently pushing your sacrum back and forth into a really gentle rocking motion. Try not to use any muscular force here, just the momentum of your hips rocking back and forth, sinking to the ground, remembering your breath here, and letting that really gentle rocking motion soothe you. Rocking is a very soothing movement for the nervous system, the vagus nerve. It can keep bringing us down into a rest and digest mode. We'll come back to center briefly as we prepare to move to our other side, reaching the left hand out, drawing the hips in toward the chest. Let the head rest on the arm as you gently rock your hips to the other side. Again, evoking that gentle hand, pushing your sacrum back and forth. Letting your body be soothed by the gentle rocking and your connection to the earth. When you're ready, we'll return back to center on our bellies. And you can come back to crocodile pose briefly. And we'll take a few breaths here just to notice anything that might have softened. From here, I invite you to bring your hands to your shoulders. You can keep your head resting on the ground. As we establish our hasta bandha, our connection of our hands to the earth. You'll begin by pressing through the heel of your hands to the earth and the fingertips press into the earth, keeping your fingers tented. Pressing the pointer finger and the thumb firmly into the earth, you can lift your thumb and drop it so there's no tension there. And then also bring your attention to your pelvis and establish that connection to the earth, pointing, pressing your hip points into the earth. After you've established your ground here in both your hands and your hips, and imagine the earth's energy being sucked up through your hands like a straw, comes up through your hands, through your arms, into your shoulders, pulling into your heart space. And as that earth energy suffuses into your heart space, you feel an expansion in your chest. Allow that earth energy to similarly pull in from your hips and into your hip bowl. And as you bloom here with earth energy suffused through your whole body, letting those two points of earth energy in your heart and your hips pull into your solar center. And you start to feel the energizing of your whole core. From this point where you are energizing your entire core through the earth energy suffusing through you, push yourself up into Cobra. Let your belly be soft here as you pull your belly button up and in, engaging your pelvis, your pelvic floor. And we'll come back down. Now we can do exactly that once more, coming up to Cobra, or you can lift your hands off the floor, fly them back, reaching towards your feet. And as you feel that earth energy suffuse through your hips once more, energizing your entire core, lift your legs off the ground. Let the belly be soft and breathe as you breathe here. Breathing through the side body and the back. This is a challenging pose, so I invite you to maintain that connection to the earth so that you're not muscling through this, but allowing that groundedness to be what holds you up here. We'll take one more breath. 
and we will exhale down back to the earth. Bringing the hands back to the ground, to the earth, we will push ourselves up into a table pose. Maintain that suction cup-like feel of your hands to the earth, pressing the top of your feet into the earth as well as we maintain that really stable ground. You'll want to bring your belly button up and in to allow any excess curvature in the spine to release. And create a long line of energy from the hips to the crown of your head as you feel the stability of the earth here. We'll move into another challenging posture, but we're gonna go in with an ally here. So as we hang out in our table pose here, feeling that stability, from here, we are meeting our second ally, Samana Vayu. This is our inner fire. You can imagine a yellow glowing center right in your solar plexus. And as you inhale, you can imagine that energy beaming outward. And as you inhale, that energy gathers back in toward your center. So let's breathe here, visualizing Samana Vayu here. As we inhale, our energy radiates outward. And as we exhale, pulling the belly button up and in, our energy comes back into the center, feeling our vital life force energy, holding us into the stable posture. Now we'll move into bird dog from here. So ground your left leg into the ground and your right leg, hand into the ground. And we're going to lift our right leg, finding stability here, drawing that belly button up and in, grounding through the pel pelvic floor. When you find, feel stable here, you can lift your left arm. Press back into your heel, reach with your arm, feeling a long line of energy, trashing your spine as your belly remains soft here, engaged but soft. Notice any tension that you might feel in your neck and can you soften the back of your neck here? We'll release. We'll ground into our right leg and our left hand as we lift our left hand leg out. Pushing into our back heel, finding that steady ground here, letting the pelvis drop, feeling our quads engaged, and we'll bring that right arm up if it feels accessible. Imagine the spine lengthening, the arm reaching, the heel pushing back as we maintain a steady breath here. And we'll drop down to the ground. We'll push back into child's pose and take some restful breaths here. As you relax into child's pose, Keep your breath deep, breathing in through the side body and through the back body. Feeling your back expand with each breath. Feeling the belly button draw up and in with each exhale. Drawing from the ground, earth energy through the legs, up to the pelvis and into our core. We visualize that inner fire expanding and contracting, beaming out and beaming in. As we activate that inner fire, as we stand up, pushing up through our knees, tall. Inhale, take an inhale here and exhale, drop the arms. Inhale back up and exhale the arms down, inhale the arms up, exhale the arms down. Once more, inhale the arms up and we'll drop to a table pose. Lift the tailbone, lift the head, opening the heart, opening the collarbones into cat. 
As we exhale, we round into cow, dropping the tailbone. Inhale to cat, exhale to cow. From here, we ignite that inner fire, drawing us back up into our tall lifted position. And we come slowly back to the ground to child's pose. When you're ready, we will use our hands to assist us back up till we're sitting on our knees. If this is not comfortable for you, you're welcome to sit on a block, a blanket, or simply sit cross-legged. I'll come to face you. We'll establish a strong spine here by dropping our tailbone, opening our collarbones, lifting the belly button up and in, and giving a nice gentle tuck to our chin. Soften the back of the neck. And let the knees sort of push out to let you drop a little bit deeper into your seat. Here we'll meet our third ally in healing burnout, which is our imagination, the third eye center. Through imagination, we are able to access energy that might not feel accessible to us in the moment. So this stretch is a, an eye stretch um, to help us come back into our imagination. It's also a beautiful somatic release for our face. So we'll look straight ahead and without moving the head, bring your gaze to the right. Now take your gaze, move your, you're moving your eyeballs really, really slowly. Try not to skip as you scan the right. And then bring your head slowly to meet your gaze. Now slowly bring your gaze back to center. And bring your head to meet it. Bring your gaze to the left without moving your face. And then bring your face to meet it. Bring your gaze back to center. And meet your face. From here, we will set up We'll walk out to a table and set ourselves up for a downward facing dog. Push yourself into your first downward facing dog of class. It's also our only downward facing dog of class. So we're going to hang out here for a little bit. We're going to maintain that suction cup grounding with the hand. We're going to give ourselves a really generous bend in our knees. And we're going to push the hip points up to the sky. We're going to let that neck be light, like a bobblehead. So just, you know, give your head a shake and a nod. Make sure that the neck is light and loose here. We're going to do an internal rotation of our, sorry, an external rotation of our arms, allowing us to create a stronger foundation. As we plug our our arms into our shoulder sockets, creating a really strong connection with our shoulder girdle. Keeping the legs bent. So as you inhale, inhale the energy up through your hands and pause that energy at your pelvis. Pause the prana at your pelvis. And on the exhale, let all of that energy cascade down your legs, releasing any tension there. Inhale, up through the feet, pausing the prana at your pelvis, and on the exhale, cascade that energy down your back. We'll do that once more, breathing in through the hands, up the spine, and exhaling down the legs. Inhale through the feet, cascading exhale down the back. 
We'll prepare to move to the front of our mat, drawing the belly button up and in to engage as we lift up, creating space to allow us to walk forward to the top of the mat. And we will meet here in our forward fold, lifting our hip points up as we root through the feet. We'll draw our belly button up and in, reach the pelvic floor, allowing us to drop deeper into our fold, checking in on our neck, making sure it's nice and soft, seeing if we can feel any softening in the back here. Pushing in through the feet, feeling that connection to the earth. We push into the earth and allow the earth energy to shoot up into our legs and rise forward, unfurling like a fern toward the sun as we come to our Tadasana. Here in Tadasana, we'll check our alignment of our feet, making sure that they're about a fist width apart and that our knees are facing forward. Lift the toes and drop them and press the heels into the ground like you have thumbtacks on the back of your heels, pushing you into the ground. Maintain that slight bend in your knees, drop the pelvis, draw the belly button up and in, feel the chest open as your collarbones open up, creating space, tucking the chin in slightly, and imagining that there is a golden thread lifting your head up. elongating the spine with this firmly rooted posture, feeling your skeleton supporting you. Not the muscles and but not the muscles, but your skeleton capable of holding all of your weight without muscling through. And just in case we want to let go of any tension in the body here. So we're going to just find some loose flowing. You can sway back and forth. You can Bring the arms in, let the legs be soft, the knees be soft, let the pelvis be heavy, let the heart be open, let the neck be soft. As you bring in the element of sahaja, of spontaneous movement, we acquaint ourselves with another alley, our spirit. This is the body moving exactly how it wants to. Letting Letting your movements be small. Letting them be small, tiny. Really innocuous to the nervous system. Maybe you want to drape or collapse a little bit. That's okay. Collapse. Let yourself collapse. Let yourself complete the movement of collapse. <sighs> Sighing, yawning. These are all excellent signs of shifting a new state of calmness. And from here, we're going to come back to stillness and just notice. Does the body feel a little more easeful? And we're going to push into that thumbtack heel ground connection. And we're going to really push into the balls of our heels here into a bouncing motion, inviting in release, inviting in earth energy to start to surge through our system as we invite our body to shake. Shaking is the medicine of the entire animal kingdom. Animals, when they experience fear, trauma, they shake to release that trauma from their body. And we have lost a bit of our Fear, we have lost a bit of that connection to our natural trauma response. So we shake to let our body let go. <sighs> Letting the belly be loose here. Letting the pelvis be really heavy. Letting the shake suffuse into the very core of your body. Imagine the core of an apple, that central channel that runs from the tip of your tailbone to the top of the crown, letting the shakes suffuse into that. Letting your spine join in on the shake. 
and your arms and your extremities in on the shake. This is time to let go. And we will come to stillness, noticing what has shifted in your body. We've moved a lot of energy through our flowing and our shaking. Let's notice that energy. And let's gather it. Gather it through the power of our imagination into that fire space. Into our center, our core. Harvesting all of that energy that we have just created tending to the fire inside of us. We have created this energetic shift. We have created this fire. We have tended to our internal flame. From this space, we'll step our feet just a little bit wider as we meet our third ally, our prana, our breath, sensing the fire that we've just tended to, we will take several breaths of joy. It looks like this. We raise our arms up, we raise our arms out, we raise our arms up, and we fall. In that, we take three short inhales and we take one big exhale with the sound ha. It looks like this. Let's do a few of those together. Up, out, up, down. Up, out, up, down. Once more. Meet with our hands to our heart. Notice how your energy has shifted and harvest that energy to your core. That is yours. You have created it. With our imagination at that fire in our belly, full of all of the vibrant energy that we have just stirred up and harvested and tended our fire with. We will walk our feet out a little bit. So we're about four feet apart with our feet at 45 degree angles. And we'll sink down into goddess pose. Feeling the heels strongly rooted to the earth, that thumbtack connection to the earth feeling the pelvis drop heavy. Imagining that we have a tail that is relaxed and like an anchor dropping to the earth. We want the knees to bend as much as feels comfortable here without coming inward. We wanna keep that engagement here in our inner thighs to allow us to drop deeper while pushing our knees out parallel with our feet. Engage our root chakra with Mula Bandha as we engage our pelvic floor. Draw the belly button up and in. A slight tuck to the chin to bring that stability to our spine. Feeling that inner fire burning at the center of our core as we notice the downward energy of the Pana Vayu going down our legs, rooting us stably to the earth. And we feel the upward energy of pranavayu pulling our rib cage up, our head up. We'll take our hands to our knees if they're not there already. We'll bring our torso into a slight fold out in front of us, just a little bit, as we move into some juicy torso circles. Moving through the central locus of 
that fire that we are tending to. Letting that be what is stirred as we move our torso. Maintaining the energy of our feet to the floor, keeping us firmly rooted as we stir that fire, stoke that fire. Maintaining the integrity of our spine, keeping our torso one long unit as we circle. Then we'll take some twists here, dropping our right shoulder as we look to the left, coming back to center, dropping our left shoulder as we look behind us to the right. And from here, we will push off from the earth, rising into our star pose, feeling all the energy of our core that we have stoked as we remember that inner fire, as we inhale, pulling inward as we exhale, beaming outward. Drawing into our imagination the energy of nuclear fusion, the unstoppable force within us, beaming outward. All while grounded solid to the earth, opening through the collarbone, honoring our ability to expand, to brighten, Sometimes we are blind to our own brightness. We'll come back, bring our arms to center to rest our arms a little bit as we swivel out into warrior two. We'll point our right toe forward, swivel our left toe to be at more of a 45 degree angle and open our arms out squaring the hips, feeling the arms firmly rooted into the shoulder sockets, feeling lifted and held by our inner fire, feeling the earth energy grounding us here in this fierce pose. And we bring our attention to the third eye center as we look forward into our future. Draw your energy inward and imagine the energy of the warrior here. Imagine what it is to fight. What does fighting mean to you? What are you fighting for? What are you moving towards? We'll move into a peaceful warrior. Imagine your arms are holding a giant steering wheel. As you take that steering wheel and swerve to the left. Feeling a grand opening here in this right side body. Allowing your gaze to drop down to your foot, letting your neck be soft here, letting your fire burn making sure that you're not collapsing through your short side body here, but you're using it to support and allow the opening of your body here. Reminding us of our ability to change directions at any time, to choose peace, to choose what is good for our bodies. Come back to warrior two. Then we'll move to start a wide-legged fold here. Bringing your hands to heart center, letting your arms rest a little bit. And we'll take it to the other side, pointing the left foot toward the back of your mat and bringing the right foot to a 45 degree angle, bringing your knee to a 45, 90 degree bend, drawing the belly button up and in as you let your pelvis be heavy. Imagine that tail dropping to the floor Imagine the chin tucking as your gaze looks forward, imagining what you want to move toward. Take a moment to visualize that in your imagination. What are you moving towards? We've stoked our energy. We found strength, the strength that was in us the whole time. And now we imagine what we want to move towards, how we want to take grounded action towards our dreams. 
grab that big invisible steering wheel and swerve to the right, honoring your ability to stretch, to change shape. Inhaling through the side body and the back body, honoring your ability to take in more. We'll come back to warrior two and we'll come back to star. Evoking that inner fire once more as we beam out the biggest we've beamed all day. As the energy suffuses all the way out into our limbs, giving us the strength to expand. From here, we'll bring our hands to heart center, honoring the power within us. We'll walk our feet in just a bit as we ground through the heels really strongly, ground through the feet, lift the toes and drop them to create our firm ground. Drop the pelvis, feel that tail reaching toward earth. Feel the knees lift as the quads engage as we drop into our Malasana squat. Feel the root chakra engage here as you engage the pelvic floor, lift the belly button up and in, allowing you to sink further, to surrender a little bit more to the earth, to your grounded presence. And we will surrender back to the floor, back to earth. Extend your arm, your legs out in front of you as your tall spine lifts. Just let your, let your legs bounce and jiggle, letting go of any tension that might have cropped up. You can put your arms behind you a little bit for support and windshield wiper. Letting go of any tension that might be lingering in the back. And we'll come up back up to that staff pose. We'll engage the legs by pushing the heels out, imagining that you are grounded into the earth just from a different angle. Allowing the, lifting the kneecaps, feeling your leg buzzing with energy. Feeling that energy lift your spine that invisible string pulling the head up, feeling the ribs lift and expand, feeling the belly button draw up and in as we finally surrender to our forward fold. Here we meet our final ally, surrender. Surrendering to the quiet within us, surrendering to the quiet within us. When we don't know what action to take, honoring that silence often has answers. From this forward fold, we allow our senses to withdraw and we allow ourselves to take a peek into the unseen. The back represents the unseen parts of ourselves. Our backs are often tight because the unseen can be scary, because we don't trust it. And what happens if you choose in this moment to trust the unseen, to trust what you don't know yet? Can you bring some softness to your back? Can you trust the unseen parts of you? Breathing deep from the side body and the back body With every inhale, the spine lengthens, and with every exhale, you let yourself sink deeper into the quiet sides of yourself. Ensuring that you're maintaining that energizing quality of your legs, ground into the floor here, feel your legs press into the earth, feel the knees lift, feel the root chakra engage here, 
the belly button lifts as you slowly, slowly, one vertebrae at a time, draw yourself back up to a straight spine. Let the legs bounce and jiggle one more time as we release ourselves down, down, down to the earth, feeling that fire the whole way down. So slow. Down to the earth. We'll take one final release here, drawing our knees up to our chest, drawing our head up to our knees as we squeeze, 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 concentrating every tension into this one moment, the concentration of all that we have endured. And in one final release, let it go. It's not yours anymore. Find Shavasana. You may choose to stay in Shavasana, but if you're ready, you can join me to close. We'll start by finding some tiny movements in our fingers and toes. Letting our body gently rock from side to side. Until you Gently rock to one side or the other. And lift yourself to a seated position. You're welcome to keep your eyes closed. You're welcome to stay in Shavasana for as long as you like. If you are joining me seated, we will close with ch the chanting of the sacred sound of our inner fire, the solar plexus chakra seed sound is Ram. So we will chant Ram five times. Ram. Ram. Thank you. The fire in me. Feel the fire in you.